In March, the MBTA announced a year-long pilot program that would keep trains and some buses running until 3 a.m. on weekends. The agency had experimented with late-night bus service back in 2001, but it was discontinued four years later due to low ridership. Now, halfway into the new pilot program, we wondered whether the late-night service was still running smoothly. WGBH News reporter Ed Edgar Herwick has this focus report. Six months ago, on the first night of late night tea service, there was an unmistakable air of celebration. <laughs> Tonight, there wasn't the same buzz in the air, but there were still plenty of folks riding the rails. Katie was heading from Brookline to Copley to meet up with friends. She says it's been a game changer for her. Like I have friends who live in East Boston, and I'll go out and meet with them, and I know I can stay for a while before I have to catch a tea home, which is nice. Among those on the trains were the very people tea officials were hoping to attract. Servers headed home after their shifts, and Bailey, an intern from Montana, working in the high-tech science field. She's only been in town for two weeks and was surprised to learn that the late-night tea service was new. I expected it to stay late because so many people are out at night. Yeah, especially college. There's so many colleges around, young students. Most riders were students and postgrads. Aaron, Brooke, and Mandy say that in the past six months, the late-night service has meant fewer costly cab rides and no more sketchy walks home. Now that the tea is finally running late night hours, it's just, it's safer, it's more cost efficient it's for cheaper, people. Yeah, cheaper. Yeah, so it's made a really huge difference. Yeah. The trains and stations in and around hot spots like Kendall Square and Park Street were bustling into the wee hours, but you didn't have to stray too far to find thinner crowds. So we're here in Harvard Square. I think the term ghost town is probably a little bit too strong, but there is definitely a sense of calm and quiet. Actually, ghost town might be the right word. That doesn't worry MBTA General Manager Beverly Scott, who says riders have been respectful and that ridership thus far has met, if not exceeded, her expectations. Oh, we're well, we're, we're over 500,000 now. This is like since, what, March 28th, okay? On just um, rail alone, on this, we're at over 16,000 on the, the, you know, the Friday and the Saturday nights, and it's really tracking very nicely. That's 16,000 on average per weekend. Of more concern is the cost. Sponsor dollars are covering just 1.5 of the $16 million it's costing to run the late night tea for a year. Make no mistakes about this, okay? It's going to be very, very challenging for us and for our board because it is expensive service, and this is really this administration and our, and our mass dot that have stepped out there to say we're going to really get out there and, and give it everything we can. So, halfway through the year-long pilot, does it appear that the service is on track to become a permanent feature? We certainly love the service, I mean, what's happening thus far, but in the scheme of things, we're going to have to line all the dollars and the cents up. That kind of caution won't please Arthur Veal of Boston, who says that what the many people he knows who work late-night security and grocery jobs really need is a weekday late-night service. Most people don't work on weekends. They work on weekdays. I think if you want to try run a trial-based service, you're going to try to run it on... No, the weekdays when people are working, people are coming in for overnight shifts. Well, cost is really the key here, mm -hmm. Emily. You know, uh, they're, as Bev Scott said, very pleased with the ridership. But if you look over the numbers and what this is costing to do, which is $16 million, you could quadruple the ridership and it still wouldn't recover the cost. So she's saying that people need to ride, especially through the winter months, because they're evaluating this as they go month to month and they have nothing to compare it to since they've never done it. But they're going to decide to do this because people are riding it, and it's going to be at a loss. So they're really going to have to be able to make their case, well, I, wonder I think. what Arthur Veal said is accurate. What if they ran it during the week as an experiment? Would you get more riders, or do they think fewer because... Yeah, it's, it's I, I don't know if crowd. it's that it's a fewer because it's a party crowd or there's a whole bunch of other concerns that get raised if they're running it through the week. And the biggest of which I think is servicing the tea. Mm -hmm. You know, they've yeah. said this is an older system. A lot of them are just single tracks. And so they need some time to be able to do maintenance I on see. the tea. So that becomes an issue if you ride if you run it during the week. Now, have they had any incidents late at night? I mean, because that was one of the concerns. Yeah, I mean, Bev Scott said that generally speaking, that things have been really smooth, that people have been really respectful. I think she said there were a handful of things that she would describe as rising to the level of being an incident, right? <laughs> but certainly when I was down there talking with these people, already in six months, the, the final trains, especially the B-line trains on the green line, 
coming outbound out of the city have become legendary already. People talking about uh -huh. it. it's a little bit crazier, it's a little bit wilder. One story a woman told me about somebody who kept pulling the emergency oh. brake and finally they had to get the cops. And so there's been a little of that, but uh, you know, Bev says that people have been respectful. I got to take her at her word. Yeah. All right, Edgar Herwick, thanks for checking back in with that story. No problem.